G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday evening here in Australia, market is down ever so slightly, so just under uh, 2 point, or oh, sorry, 2.14 trillion and about less than 1% uh, under where it was yesterday, so almost half a percent, which is not really a lot. All right, BTC dominance holding above 42%, which is nice. Uh, a bit of volume there, which is to be expected uh, as the you know the week is starting. People are starting to come in, so getting ready for Monday morning stateside time. Bitcoin just under 48,000, and gas prices around uh, $4.10. Now, again, the market is down, so you expect to see a fair bit of red, but there are outliers, as we can see. There's some movers. So what's been the biggest mover in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Right, Axie Infinity, nearly 40%. It's absolutely skyrocketing now that they've got staking. Uh, people are just jumping uh, on board very, very fast. DYDX, obviously making uh, further moves. Again, all the Chinese have been told uh, KuCo they, you know, they can't have their money in KuCoin. Uh, so it's thought and suspected that a lot of them have then moved over to DYDX, decentralized exchange that China can't really stop. Algorand, bit of a nice move. Comey, Curve, Engine. I was literally just talking about this yesterday that I thought it was looking uh, like a pretty good setup. And so, you know, I'm not saying that had anything to do with it, but, you know, a bit of a coincidence that now people have uh, uh, jumped on board with uh, Engine. Uh, Helium, Telcoin, Shiba Inu, don't know what's going on there. Holo, uh, Terra Luna. Look, a couple of nice movers and some really uh, nice double digit movers, which is always good but the market is generally down. So there's only a few movers and then it's generally, uh, you're gonna see more red. So what hasn't fared so well in the top 100? Right, IOTA down a little bit, 7%. Icon, Compound, we got a story about Compound, we'll have a look very shortly. Uh, Ecash, Zello, Hedera, Serum, Quantum, uh, Adam. Again, the market is generally down, so you're gonna see more red, but again, Axie Infinity, what a move. I mean, 40%, that thing's just, being a behemoth, you know, again, it's one of those projects you just wish you had gone in. If you didn't get in, if you did, then congratulations to you because it was literally only a couple of dollars probably a year ago and now it's trading at 140. I mean, imagine you put $100 into something that was literally only a couple of dollars each. You would be absolutely laughing right about now. That'd be an amazing return. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart then. So, we can see Bitcoin, it's having some trouble getting past this $48,000 mark. Now this has me somewhat concerned, I'm not trying to spread FUD, not giving any financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but this could still play out that it rolls over and we start to go lower. So again, I don't like to spread FUD and I'm not trying to scare people, but this could definitely still be a dead cat bounce. Again, we had our high, come down, hit a low, get everyone excited and roll even lower. All this is, it's just another one of these, if, it, if that's what it turns out to me. Everyone excited, we hit a low. Get everyone excited, no, we hit a low. Get everyone excited, no, we hit another new low. So that is something we need to keep in mind. Now for me at the moment, I have money on the side. I'm not deploying it at the moment, at least not into crypto. I am, you know, putting my money into stable coins at the moment. Until I see Bitcoin, uh, sorry, yeah, until I see Bitcoin get above that fifty-two thousand dollar mark and a good healthy close above it, uh, I'm not going to be aping into any altcoins. It's just too risky at the moment. It's great when they go up, but if Bitcoin does roll over and again we come back down to thirty-eight thousand, gee, that's really going to hurt. But as I said the other day, fortune favors the brave. So if you're absolute, this is a bull market and you know this is going up then hey, the altcoins are probably not a bad place to be, but I'd rather play it just a little bit safe at the moment. And again, we don't really have to go far. So all we need is Bitcoin to rise another $4,000 and then I'll be quite happy to start going back into altcoins. But until I see that, it's stable coins and Bitcoin for me. And I'm only putting a little bit into Bitcoin in case this does roll over. But again, I my... My personal opinion, and that's what it is, it's always a personal opinion, is we're still in a bull market. I don't think we're in a bear market, but I'm just not going to let my sort of bias take over, specifically when the chart looks like this. I need confirmation of things before I start to, yeah, again, go heavy back into buying more crypto. I'd rather just the stable coins for now, just this brief period of time. All right, moving on, a couple interesting stories. 
So Coinbase is meeting with US lawmakers to discuss crypto regulatory proposal. I love this. This is exactly what is needed. So the NASDAQ listed crypto exchange Coinbase has been meeting with members of Congress to discuss the cryptocurrency regulation it plans to propose, according to CEO Brian Armstrong. In addition, the company has met with more than 30 crypto firms, four major law firms and three trade groups about its crypto proposal. I love this story. This is brilliant. This is how we need to get crypto uh, regulated with people who actually understand it. Now, don't get me wrong, we still need people from the old sort of uh, regulatory finance system and all the rest of it, but they need to come together. It can't be just people who don't understand crypto, have nothing to do with it whatsoever, you know, put together all these regulations thinking that that will work. Again, I've said, you can't fit this new thing inside the old thing. It just won't work. We need all new regulations, most likely a new agency, you know, put together to help build this you know, things evolve and that is the way laws need to be and that is the way everything needs to be. That, what doesn't evolve, eventually becomes extinct. It's as simple as that. It's always been that way. So I love that Brian Armstrong is out there doing his thing. Hopefully he's going to get some really good uh, regulation that works for both ends because it can't be just all, you know, for the crypto enthusiasts that they get everything they want uh, and the old regular finance system gets nothing that they want. It's just not going to happen like that. So we need to find that happy medium, again, with good healthy regulation. And speaking of good healthy regulation, stable coins must be backed by cash, says pro crypto Senator Cynthia Lummis, I think is how it's pronounced. I could be wrong and correct me, but I think it's Lummis. She says stable coins need to be cash backed and regular, regularly audited. I absolutely agree with this 100%. To have true stability in the crypto space, considering how big stable coins are now, anyone who has a stable coin must be able to prove that it is actually backed by cash. Physical cash, until physical cash is not gone, and then it needs to be audited. Now she did go over here and says, she says stable coins must be cash backed and possibly issued by banks. I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. But in saying that, I don't want banks to simply come in and, uh, you know, take away from the good stablecoin projects we, ha we have out there. I think they, again, they need to work together. But I don't mind banks having stablecoins uh, issued in their name because they are heavily regula uh, regulated by the government, things like that. Now, not perfect. They've still done plenty of scams and things like that. But the stablecoins, I think, is one of the biggest growing issues inside crypto is there would be nothing worse than, again, someone saying, yeah, we've got all these stable coins, and then all of a sudden uh, it turns out it's not backed by anything. Hence why Tether's had to come out. They're now regulatory, regular, regularly audited, and they've been audited by external fir firms. It's not just them saying that they're doing it. I think Circle and USDC, they have said they are going to 100% cash-backed uh, stable coins to be regulatory compliant and I think all the other stable coins will need to do the same for them to last in this space and that is how we make it safe and this is the kind of regulation that I was talking about this is healthy regulation we don't want just some random company saying yeah we've got this stable stable coin and it's backed by stuff that doesn't work that's going to lead to problems that will lead to literally major catastrophes in the industry so absolutely cash back and regular, regularly audited by the old system, unfortunately. We can't have, you know, again, new systems coming in who've never had anything to do with auditing, you know, banks and uh, money and things like that. We really do need to be audited by the old system. So it, it's one of those troubling things. A lot of us, particularly those in crypto, we want to move completely away from the old system, but the old system's not going away just yet it will take generations for that to change because there are still plenty of generations in that old system. And until they kind of, you know, this sounds horrible, but move on and to the next world and beyond and all the rest of it, uh, and the new young people coming through kind of take over the world as they say, this isn't going nowhere. But I think the old system know that their days are numbered. They aren't going to last. This is the future. All right, Compound, this is unfortunate. This is not good. 
200 sorry 22 million dollars has been drained from compound contract that was hit for 80 million last week so we spoke about there was a contract and it gave out too many rewards it was 80 million well another 22 million has happened now so about 66 million and counting was recently added to the still vulnerable contract thus making more funds available for the exploit so this is a real problem for compound and they need to get this fixed and this is some of the dangers of investing you know even in what we call the blue chip DeFi's compound they're one of the first and been around for ages and they have these kind of issues going on hence why be very careful putting your money into you know altcoins and that's not financial advice that's just my personal opinion bitcoin is you know it's stood the test of time none of the others have most of these other altcoins that are out are probably a year old to maybe five years old at best there's not too many that are more that are older than that that have stood the test of time litecoin but it really isn't faring so well ethereum which has been around for a while but we still need to see eth 2.0 and xrp which i think has been around since well, i think it was 2012 that's one of the older ones that's stood the test of time but look it's not doing that great at the moment now we go down here so at approximately 9 30 a.m one eth address claimed 37,500 uh, of the compound tokens that was about 12 million dollars worth another claimed 14,995 which was 4.9 million dollars worth now these funds were claimed by contracts from the maker dow now maker dow is not trying to rip them off they've just come in and cl uh, claimed them and they are now in two separate addresses additional claims of the comp token have brought the total drained to 22 million now mega dow representatives have been active in helping to find solutions to the bug per compound compound founder robert leshner uh, and a maker rare a maker dow rep did not return a request to comment by the time of the publication so again this is an issue and yeah compound a full blue chip and look at the issues they're having so again everyone you know it's good to get excited by new projects and all the rest of it but they just have they don't have that history behind them there is no guarantees just because they've worked for one year two years three years doesn't mean they're going to last forever and there's no issues you know bitcoins had issues over its history you know if you're watching my channel i'm hoping you already know that they haven't been uh faultless they've had issues ethereum's had issues we saw the issue solana had not long ago multiple you know multiple issues throughout multiple chains hence why you've got to be very careful in this space it is a very new space we don't know exactly where it's going but for me bitcoin is the most solid of them all hence why i have my you know sort of money where my mouth is and i have a good bitcoin position ethereum still waiting to see my ethereum position is bigger simply because it's gone up by more but yeah we still need to be careful and again unfortunate for compound but hopefully they can get together with the maker dow uh, and some you know blockchain experts obviously uh, and get these uh, things fixed all right binance customers uh, over in the UK uh, were buying tokenized stocks well they were doing it in multiple places one just there but Binance is now letting their customers move the stock tokens before the service gets shut down so they're allowing European customers to migrate their tokens uh, tokenized stocks to another company and so customers in Europe uh, and over in Switzerland can now migrate their tokenized stocks off of Binance to CM Equity AG that's a in German investment firm where Binance got all these tokenized stocks from so customers from other nations such as the United Kingdom can't migrate their tokens yet but they can sell them on Binance up until the 14th of October and if customers don't sell the tokens uh, or move them uh, to this company Binance is just going to sell them off on the 15th of October so I like that that's really good they're going to make sure that no one sort of loses their money or anything like that so again they're not selling them uh, for nothing they're sort of getting their money back whatever price they're kind of worth now as opposed to simply losing them but again this is the regulation that's coming you're not going to be able to sell tokenized stocks without you know having permission from the SEC and all sorts of things like that and Binance have found out the hard way but it's good to see that no one's uh, just outright losing their money they're being given the option to sell them now and look even if they don't do that Binance is going to do it on their behalf so good that no one's losing money all right last but not least plan B so he's been 
deadly accurate with a, uh, some of his some of his predictions. Now, not the SF2 model. That hasn't played out. I mean, he's got multiple uh, different charts out there. So, you know, if you have enough charts, eventually you're going to be right. But he has made some pretty good calls. Now, he believes that the second leg of the market will likely have about six more months to go. So, I mean, you know, we're in sort of October now. That takes us through to about sort of March, April next year, thereabouts. Very, very interesting. Imagine another six months. But I think it will drag out sideways. I don't think we're just going to, again, have this big rocket up uh, in December and go above 100,000. It's definitely possible, but it just doesn't look like it's kind of doing that. You know, we haven't had these kind of moves. We haven't really had these kind of moves. We did have this, which was nice, but then it tapered off. And as we can see, a lot of sideways movement. So I think it will be a much stretched out bull cycle i really do think the four year cycles have changed are they completely gone no i don't think they're completely gone yet but they're just not going to play out the way they have before and it's because so many people know about it now still a small percentage of you know people out there in the world we've still got a lot of people still to come to the space but the people here in the space they all know how it has played out so i don't think you know anyone's going to go right you know, well we're just going to take it to a hundred thousand and then let it dump down there it's going to be all over the place and it's going to be a test of will for a lot of people but i do think it gets there but i know this s2f model a lot of people are saying this will actually be the ceiling now once it gets up to around about here this is when you can guarantee it's going to dump if not before then because again everyone knows about this chart and if everyone knows about it then it's probably unlikely to get there but we'll have to wait and see that could be completely wrong now what is interesting here is what he said about one of his models he thought the floor would be 47,000 for Bitcoin in August he was pretty much spot on September he was spot on he's saying 63 in October that's basically now by the end of October it should be 63 98,000 this is minimums and 135,000 by December. So who knows how high it goes. Now again, he's been right on two, and that's great, and there's other ones he's been right on, but is he going to be you know, correct with these others? Again, the problem is so many people know about it, so probably not. It could either go way over, or possibly a little bit under, or maybe even way under, we'll have to see. But here's the things that he's come out and says that he believes will trigger uh, the next leg of the Bitcoin market. ETF approval, I would agree. I think if that happens, that is really going to send things to the races. Uh, a futures one won't be as good. We really want, you know, uh, one that is pegged to the actual Bitcoin itself. Uh, national adoption, nation adoption, so other countries coming out. I absolutely agree. I don't think El Salvador is going to be the last. Uh, you know, Jack Mauler, what he's doing with the Stripe app, I agree. Amazon, Apple, Google, um, and Microsoft adoption. I think this is already likely starting to happen. We're just not going to know about it. But once that information does come out, because they have to have it on their books, again, I think all of these things by themselves could push Bitcoin a whole lot higher. You know, RSK killer use case block stream, I don't know exactly what that is, but the next Michael Saylor or Paul Tudor Jones or uh, Elon Musk to come out and say, yeah, I'm putting, you know, a billion dollars worth of my money into, you know, again, Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever it may be. I, again, I think that will change things. And this, China doing a U-turn on crypto. And I think it's only a matter of time until they do. They probably realize that kicking everyone out of China with the uh, Bitcoin mining, it was either a strategic move by them, they did it on purpose, and there's some kind of probably motive behind it, or they just really didn't think it through. And that's unusual for Chinese people. They're usually pretty intelligent and smart, so we'll have to wait and see. But I can absolutely see China turning this around and going, hey, we actually need cryptocurrencies because they're such a big thing. All right, that's it for me. A few stories to go through. And like I said, I'm really just watching for what Bitcoin does here. Uh, I need to see it get above 52,000, 52,500 before I'm going to get too excited. Uh, it's stable coins and just a little bit of Bitcoin, maybe a little bit of Ethereum until I see this change. Once that changes, then I'll probably start jumping back into altcoins. But that's uh, where I'm at. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.